Welcome back to Totem Pole Sports here with Coach Lambo, Coach Hutchings. We have a very special guest today, Marcus Mayo. Marcus, thanks for coming on today. How are you doing? Doing well. We're doing well. How are you? I appreciate y'all y'all having me and getting involved in anything uh, Coach Taylor's doing. Uh, is it is exciting and an adventure. So yeah, awesome. Yeah, we got a shout out to, to Coach Taylor, LC Bird. Um, so Marcus, go ahead and introduce yourself to Totem Pole Nation. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, grew up. Uh, you know, uh, in in Virginia, uh, between Virginia and Maryland, actually, you know, grew up in a, a military family, a Navy family, but you know, um, you know, Virginia and Maryland's been home. Spent a lot of my time between uh, uh, Northern VA and uh, the, the seven five, which I'm, which <laughs> everyone's very familiar with, um, and you know, been coaching between high school and college ball the last you know fifteen or sixteen years. I uh, was most recently um, the uh, a passing game uh, coordinator and uh, um, a co-coordinator with uh, Einstein um, High School uh, here in Maryland. And then um, previous year Portland was a, a, a head coach. Uh, and uh, yeah, so spent the last, you know, uh, 15, 16 years trying to figure things out and uh, you know, the longer I coach, the more I realize I don't know a whole a whole lot. So, still, uh, just just making my way each year. Yeah. So, uh, well, you obviously know enough to to get yourself out there and write the book, uh, the mindfulness, uh, mindful quarterback. And can you tell us a little bit about your book and uh, where yeah. you got inspiration or what you put in there? Yeah. So, uh, that book was written to see. Wow. Almost. What is it? Twenty twenty two. Almost twenty twenty three. So approaching. You know, six years or so ago um that book really came um i felt it, it was something that was necessary to be written really for the game of football uh it was i and uh, people ask me why i wrote it i wrote it because i felt it was needed and it needed need to be a shift in the way um the quarterback position which you know in my opinion is the hardest position in sports takes the most mental processing and you're taking on so much you know, mental and emotional energy while meeting physical expectations. And just kind of through uh, my uh, career as a player and then um, as a coach, I began to realize that there needed to be a shift in the way the quarterback was coached and also the way a quarterback decides to process and handle information. So um, I wrote it to help enhance the uh, mental and leadership tools um, of, of the quarterback position to teach how to be fully present, uh, not giving in to the emotional responses of the game, and also help maximize the way they are being coached. Uh, you know, so it's not a book about X's and O's and scheme. Here's how you can, how you do it. It's to allow the coach and or the quarterback, whoever buys the book. Um, sometimes I cook, you know, both, you know, buy and work through it together, but to help maximize being fully present and basically, you know, uh, 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 playing present, utilizing, you know, mindfulness, mindfulness, meditation, uh, really to in, uh, uh, in, enhance uh, your, your productivity. Um, so that was the kind of the gist of it. Um, so much of uh, what I saw and have seen is coaches giving commands without providing solutions. You know, don't think about it, move on, next play. But nothing about them, nothing about their body language, their emotions, their mental process is helping that. And the example I give my book, it's like if a math teacher gives you an equation, right? I wasn't even great at math skills. And you go, how do, all right, well, how do I solve them? They go, well, you just figure it out. That's how a lot of players, especially the quarterback position, feel when everything's coming down on them. They throw the pick six, something's going on. You may be telling them, and we've all done it. I know I, I've done it before, you know, telling them to calm down, move to the next play, but it's this. Everything about you is enraged in that moment of what just happened. And mindful quarterbacks and about letting that just, you know, identify what happened, allowing it to fade and just being fully present. Um, so it really helps, uh, uh, you know, create that lifestyle and that connection between coaches and players uh, to just, you know, be present and not give in to the emotions of the past. Learn from them, but play present. 
No, definitely. Very well said, too. And that's what uh, uh, definitely get a copy. And we'll get that here and uh, definitely put it in all of our videos, you know, because I've, I've been around football for a long time. I played, um, you know, I was on the all-star team with uh, Russell Wilson, played uh, high school or college football with uh, Randall Hipper, who ended up playing in the Arena Football League and uh, played over in Switzerland as well. And then got to play with uh, Tyrod Taylor as well. No, I'm still doing things in the league. And you bring up a lot of good points that those guys, that, I mean, they really did have this focus on uh, the moment and how important those things were in the moment, not dwelling on the past, but learning from it. And then um, really just, you know, taking a look at where can I get better? And then also the relationships they formed with their coaches. When I was fortunate enough to see the coaches really come together and work with these players um, and not be those guys just screaming and, and hollering and saying, you know, without telling them why you're doing this, you know, that, that big, that why is, I think is a huge thing versus just do it just because I'm your coach and that's what you're going to do. For sure. Um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about, you know, kind of touched on it a little bit, but you're just your overall uh, football philosophy. You know, what would you say is, is the most important thing to, for any young coach um, or even a, a coach that's been in it for a while to kind of embrace in, in terms of the way that they would um, help their team out? Yeah, my, my philosophy is um, uh, taken, I think, with any, like anything. It's, it's, always, it's always growing. You're always learning things new. Um, but uh, the, the concept is and the philosophy is win the now. Um, and it's kind of a coin term I've been using for a long time, probably even once uh, back when I uh, um, was coaching youth for one season back in, I don't know, like 2005, shortly after high school. It was the only way, only way I could get my foot in the door. So I started from scratch. And um, so when the now is um, very similar to where, you know, what I mentioned in the book, but it's about maximizing a culture of being in the present moment, regardless of circumstances and outcomes. And not it's not just, oh, you know, people say, oh, okay, it means win the moment or just be in the moment. It's really the moment within the moment. When you're waking up, are you fully present making your bed? When you're eating breakfast with your family, are you – you fully are you fully present there when I tell my players to go to class are you are you fully present you know in your classes when you're lifting in that rep are you fully present in that rep All right when you're communicating are you fully present there and it trickles down into a culture where um you know you compete and you want to win there's no there's no question like you compete and you at the end you you you, you want to win but it creates a culture where the scoreboard is secondary to the effort at all times. And um, what I've learned from me, though, I've, you know, Dr. and grown is it creates a healthier environment of success and overcoming difficulty. So, uh, I, you know, an example of that is, you know, been in games and, and you hold each other accountable where you're in games and you're getting – you're getting, you know, you know, you're getting beat down. And, but that current play, regardless, that current play, all of your emotion is into that. No matter, no matter what. And it really comes down to if you can rest your head on your pillow at night and not have regrets, that's, that, that's when the now. And when you are in that present moment, all of your emotions are fully into that that play. Just like the hype when you're coming through the, the, the tunnel and that smoke and those fireworks and those fans are going nuts, that's the same emotion and feeling you get for preparation when it's the final play of your senior year. And one of the um, best examples we had of that um, in my uh, previous school, the head coach at Northwood, we were, you know took over a program that had no identity, no culture, struggle for a long time, and we were in a game where it was over. And we couldn't, you know, there was nothing that we could really do to, you know, have the outcome that we wanted to, to win. But on the final play of that um, season, the team's marching down. I put in some secondary guys, right? And they're kind of getting run over. Those guys kept their starting. They're trying to get their playoff points. 
and uh, not not to extend this too much, but my um, linebacker, starting linebacker, inserts himself in, and I said, "Okay, one's go. Let's let's see what's let, let I, I want to see what's going to happen here." They get out there, and that team goes to run the ball again. I mean, crushing them in the backfield. Our sideline goes nuts. The crowd goes nuts. Our ADs going nuts. Everybody is losing their mind because that final play and what we were doing that moment was all that mattered. And we shake hands. We're fully present in that. So anyway, long story short, it means a continuous practice of no matter what is happening, regardless, your emotions are 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 in that moment. But it's not something as simple as you can't just talk about. It, it has to be a lifestyle, you know. And you hear coach, you hear assistant coaches, and uh, even some of my players tell me when I'm when I'm kind of barking out a ref a little bit <laughs> like hey coach win the now they pull you over you're right let's focus on what we what we can do right now um so not to go on about it too much i know it, it sounds repetitive but it really is an everyday practice and in the end you know when we all as we all try to do you know teaching lessons etc i'm not concerned with what the scoreboard said at the end we won games in the end and it's like all right did we actually maximize what you're supposed to do. And I learned that at the college level from uh, uh, Coach Mike Van Deest. He's the uh, head coach at uh, Carroll College, NAI, six-time national champion. Uh, to me, pound for pound, Mount Rushmore, the college coach. And we would come into meetings after we would win a game 60 to 6. And we come into meetings and he would be pissed. Like, look at this. Look at the way we're playing. This is we're only we only won this game because we're more talented. And I'm like, man, I'm sitting here, man. My DBs had four picks. As a DBs coach, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, man, I did a great job pre prepping that week. And I look back, I know I didn't. I I relied on the fact that I had talent. And we come in, you know, the next week against a real good team, and you know, we fall short. And he's hugging everybody in the locker room. We're hugging each other like, hey, that was a great effort. We lost, but guess what? we're not going to have any regrets about maximize what we, what we could control. And so that part of that experience started helping create that philosophy as well is, um, you know, it's, it's beyond the scoreboard. So. Yeah. A lot of what you're saying really rings true. Um, something I've adopted pretty recently, it's uh, more of a narrow focus with the way you put it. I really want to start broadening that, that I was always yelling, like, this is the most important play of the game and trying to echo that to the, the kids that we coach doesn't matter if it's the first kickoff, if it's, you know, a third and two, a third and 20, a first and 10, every single play is the most important play of the game because it can change, you know, the entire trajectory. And that's, again, kind of that, you know, win the now. It's right now. This is the play that matters. And continuing into, you know, watching film, you know, looking at an individual play, each play is its own movie. You know, that's the thing. Yeah, that, that's, at. that's a good way to put it. Each, each play is its own movie. Each rep is its own movie. Each each time you move between classes is is, is its own movie. That's I, I like that. I'll that, I might I'm gonna put that in here as well. And yeah, that, I like that. Yes, yeah, because it just it builds that this we're not worried about what happened last one. We're not worried about what happened the next one. Is right now. This is our focus. Did we achieve everything we set out to do? And 100. percent I mean, I, I definitely agree with um, your football philosophy. Uh, I'm gonna let Coach Lambo jump in. Um, at the question I really wanted to ask you is. Tell us about your relationship with the run and shoot offense and your relationship with Miles Davis. So, um, I'm very, 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 very humbled that um, I've been uh, privileged and trusted enough to, to um, be a part of that uh, run and shoot uh, family. Um, so my kind of the background with that is, and, and it stretches, it's a strange story. So in 2001, I was a freshman in high school. This is before I even got into coaching. And I was watching Hawaii versus BYU. And Nick Rolovich, you guys know, is most, was head coach of Hawaii and was most recently the uh, head coach of Washington State, you know, was the, was the QB. Didn't know any of those guys. I didn't know, I didn't know you know, really June Jones or any of these things. So I went in and I'm thinking, well, BYU's undefeated at the time. And I'm like telling everybody BYU's going to, you know, crush this team from Hawaii. 
So I'm watching this game develop and I am in awe of just how wide open some of these players and they crushed them. It was like 70 to 30 or something like that. It, it, it was just, it was one of the most masterful displays of team football I've ever seen to this day. And so I was just, it just caught, you know, caught my attention. I was like, that, that was special. You know, I don't know anything about what I saw, but it was there. And I always knew I kind of wanted to coach. So um, fast forward to um, around uh, 2006, 2007, you know, before like when Timmy Chang was playing. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I've seen these guys. They're a lot of fun. So I really began to get captivated with just how they played the game. And um, continuing to move forward. So I be, what I began to do is kind of study and try to figure it out on my own, right? This is back when VHS, you should try to record on the VHS, then you rewind, try to catch whatever you got. I didn't have any film. I didn't know any of this. And so my first exposure to the film, this is, this is an embarrassing story. This is very true. Is I went on eBay because I was trying to find that, you know, how the coaches were selling the film back on DVD. And I didn't know how eBay and stuff worked, but I saw this coach have this film up that he was that he was selling and you could bid for it. So I bid like $75 <laughs> to, get this, to get this film because I was so <laughs> I just wanted this film so bad. So I still have it just more as a, a you know kind of a, a memory. So I got the film, would study it. And um so I got into high school ball, still didn't know you know a whole lot about it. Um fast forward to you know got my first um a college uh gig as a um, student assistant coach and video coordinator. And I reached out to um, Jerry Glanville, who was a longtime, you know, defensive, you know, coordinator under June Jones. And I was like, hey, coach, um, you know, can you, you know, provide me any, you know, any information on this? He's like, you know, you know, I don't know um, uh, a whole lot in terms of uh, how I can help you because, you know, I was on the defensive side. He goes, but called Jeff Reinbold at SMU. And I'll put in, you know, good word for you. Um, because everybody knows the run and shoot guys were we 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 share, but we're also protective, right? Some guys way to a fault. Don't get me wrong, it's it's you know, to a fault. And so I reach out to Jeff Reinbold, who was the receivers coach um at SMU where June Jones was. And he's filling me out and he's like, you know, yeah, you know what, come on, if you want to come out, go ahead and fly out. So I flew out um to to Dallas. And, um, you know, I was talking with him and I could tell he was kind of trying to, you know, feel me out a little bit. And then he said, you know, come on, I want to introduce you to somebody. So June Jones was in the office and I was like, I mean, I was like mind blown. Like, I, you know, I'm your young coach. I stood in front of a division one football coach before. And June Jones is also is not a small guy, right? He, he wasn't an NFL QB, you know, he's, you know, kind of a burly guy or whatever. And I go, coach, can I just give you a hug, man? I appreciate it. <laughs> I haven't wanted to meet you for so long. He's like, all right, yeah, sure. They'll give me a hug or whatever. And then went back to Ryan Wolf's place. I mean, we're, you know, we're going over some scheme stuff. And, uh, you know, we, you know, we had a talk, which was basically the talk of like, you know, you're in. You know, we'll, you know I'll, I'll, I'll teach you what you, you know you want to know and everything. And it's kind of, you know, blossomed from there. Um, got to, you know, um, no mouse a little bit. Mostly he's talking to mouse via phone all the time. I ring him all the time. Once I accidentally called him, at, you know, two in the morning, wherever he was, he picked up the phone. Uh, it, you know, uh, it's a very special group. And it's, um, if you guys want to get into some of the scheme stuff, we can. Uh, it, it's it's a fun, uh, fun system. I, I, I love it. And um, I've been very blessed to get to know guys like, June, uh, Coach Morrison, um, you know, Mouse, uh, and that and that family. And uh yeah. And so um if for any like new coaches watching, what would you say if you could put into a few key points, like the basics of the run and shoot off the offense, which you would let those coaches know to kind of implement when they're getting started? So one it, 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 so if I if I if I if I'm putting on my my purest hat. It's you're all you're all in or you're not um, if you want it. Um, but if you want to start to uh, flirt with it before making the decision, um, you got to be OK with. Living, I don't like the term live, live by it, die by it, but. 
going throwing the rock. And the difference between the run and shoot and a lot of schemes is you do have your core concepts. Like some people are like, oh, the air raid run and shoot, like, like the same thing. It's like they're not. They're 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 I know things about the air raid, but I'm definitely not uh um uh any air raid expert, but I, you know, I know setting up to know the differences. So it's not air raid. It's not just spread or spread option. You're pushing the ball vertically down the field and adjusting your routes post snap based off what the defense does. So um, a lot of what you're doing, you're passing to set up the run, you know, different, you know, different screens, et cetera. Uh, and you do actually try to, if you can run the ball, that's one of I think the biggest mis- misconceptions. You, you're throwing, 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 throwing. To me, any coach in their right mind, if you can actually run, <laughs> run it like right if you can. So you're you're passing it up the run. You're um, you're really you know pushing the ball vertical. You know different concepts. You can also even isolate different players. But in in the short, you're adjusting your routes post snap, and the, the the constant theory is you're never wrong. I'm going to adjust to what you adjust to after the ball snap. So not just seeing it and then, okay, they did this. Now I'm going to do this. It's they're doing this. I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to do this. So we always, as Mouse Davis says, you always want to have the chalk glass. We always have the chalk glass. As long as you can, you, you can protect, you got one who can sling the rock and you rep it like crazy, you know, you'll, you'll have success. So, so in the, that's, that's a lot. I mean, wow. Uh, but in the in the in the basis of the run and shoot, does the Q does the QB half roll in the run and shoot? Does he have what? Does he half roll? So there's um it's more like yeah, like a like like a, a semi um semi half roll. Now it's changed a little bit because when you're under center, it's a large kick step, right? If you go back and look at the old school, Jim Kelly, um, Andre Way, like you go back and look at under center, it's a it's a, they're, you're really getting like a a, a, um, a a wide step. So part of the semi roll, if my, my hands can do it, is you're setting up, all right, to help with the protection, but then that's creating natural movement with the defense, right? So some teams, if they want to come out and just play and, and play man, or some, some eyes, are, eyes are keyed, um, we may not have time for this. But the movement with the quarterback's eye and shoulder movement is manipulating the defense. And then what we realize is teams who do know that, because right, I'm not afraid to say it because teams study each other, right? And they go the ins and outs. If you don't do that, then it's okay. We know where we know where we need to where we can find space. So the semi-roll is designed to create rotation and movement. Also get the quarterback's eye and shoulder where you need to, you know, a, a move on, uh, on momentum. Um, and then so there is actually a, a you know, footwork tied with it, pat, pat, throw, long strides, et cetera. Um, so it is, it is um, um, a, a half roll or semi roll, right? And you, it's not just for the purpose of it to look nice. Like when Colt Brennan did it, he looked sweet. Like he was, you know, one of the baddest looking dudes in the pocket. But that helps create movement in the defense and also set up just a, um, a different rhythm. And it's, I'm glad you asked that because that's, that's actually a signature. If you know what a run and shoot team is, you can tell by the quarterback's movement, right, and and, and drop and everything. And not everyone, if you throw up film, that's that's going to be a significant difference. If you just went to the end zone and said, which one of these teams is run and shoot, and they actually are doing it, it's the it's it's that role. That role does t- play a part. Wow, that's 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 all. That's awesome. Um, now, breaking news was well, not really breaking news, but. The passing of Mike Leach has affected all of us as coaches. Um, what has Mike Leach uh, done for you as a coach? Like the impact on you, and what do you think? Um, and tell us about the air raid offense. So, Mike Leach, man, that that that's man. Mike Leach is, and I, I wish I would have had a chance to meet him uh, in person. I think what Mike Mike Lee did for football was his openness to teaching what he learned. You can't, and this is just the truth. You can't say that all the time with you and run and shoot, right? 
I think he helped him and even like how let me set a foundation where it's like that he he literally taught I think a generation more than one all right a different brand of football um and simplicity and you know playing fast and um he I mean he helped he literally helped revolutionize the game and on top of that it's rare that you have um coaches with that level of success who are that good of a dude right like can you know, make you laugh, you know, et cetera. But just his, um, I think, I think subconsciously his impact and his openness allowed me to learn more, just, just, you know, just more football. And um, I think he's just, uh, he's just generational. Uh, and I think more people are running more of the air raid and the more so than the run and shoot because of his willingness to be open and, um, and, and, and change and, and change the game. And, uh, hope, hope that answered it, but he's, he, it's, it's Mike Leach. I mean, he's, yeah, the, the, the whole statement legends never die really applies to him. Man. He's, you know, not every coach is going to be, not, there, there, are, there are coaches, there are coaches with winning record with far better winning percentages that aren't going to be nearly as Mr. Remembered as him. Uh, he's the man. So just uh, to take a moment, because you said, you know, run and shoot's different than air rate. Can you just talk about the similarities, differences between the two? So, yeah, the, the main similarities I see is the philosophy is the same on wanting to throw the ball to score. Um, even air rate more so, more, more so than run and shoot. They'll, they'll throw that ball 70 times. <laughs> they'll have running lanes and throw, and throw it. Um, but some of the differences, I think um, – the air raid does um, more like horizontal work, um, getting the ball, getting the ball out quickly. They're not afraid to get their backs out into routes, um, which could even go back to John Jenkins uh, when he had to run back in Hughes Smith. That's a whole other story. Uh, but um, I, I really like how the air raid gives the back a little bit more freedom, or the, the quarterback a little more freedom uh, to make some adjustments. They'll go high up tempo. Run and shoot, which I've done it and, and no, uh, as no huddle before, but it's probably going to be more effective when you're communicating more intimate with your quarterback because while you're explosive and you can score in, immediately on any play uh, with the adjustments and everything, you also still do want to have a level of control, you know, of you know, of the ball. So um, Air Raid doesn't have many. I mean, I'm sure they – I know Leach talked about and Mummy talked about they'll isolate one or two guys sometimes to run an option route, but uh, air raid evolved a lot of off of the belt Edwards and the West coast offense and evolved and, you know, to the air raid and uh, run and shoot evolved off, you know, Tiger Ellison's uh, um, run and shoot, which, which was before mouse Davis back in the 1950s. Um, so they, they've all evolved. Um, sometimes, you know, they, they try to, you know, mesh and blend some things. I know they've each taken a part, you know, of each other. Um, but they truly are, and I say it respectively, two different systems. Um, and I, I cringe for either side. When someone's like, oh, they're this or they're the same thing. I'm like, you know, they put in a lot of work into those systems. And uh, in, in, in the end, they want to they throw, have fun, and get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Wow. Tell us about your uh, relationship with Coach Chris Beattie. He's a, a wide receivers coach for the Chargers. Um, what impact has he had on you and what impact has he made for not just you, but in the state of Virginia and everything else? Okay, man. Beatty is Mount Rushmore for me, like of impact on my life. Like there is like, you know, Beatty, one of the, the best things that ever happened to me was being able to, um, one of the best things that ever happened to me, I was going to say this, is not being the most elite player in high school because I got to watch and observe something very special. Um, it's been almost 20 years, and Beatty will pick up the phone you know, for me anytime, uh, communicate with me. Uh, he's, in terms of my, even my, my style of, of, of coaching originally, which, you know, uh, kind of blended with the, the run and shoot. He wasn't run and shoot by any, or anything like that, but 
that wide open, throw the ball, um, get, get your athletes, you know, the, you know, getting your athlete the ball in space. Um, in terms of philosophy, just, I, I, you know, go back and remember so many things. It's, you know, maximizing personnel, maximizing ways to get your guys, uh, your playmakers the ball and or using them as decoys. Um, and in terms of just that impact on my life, I, I and him to this day, uh, there's very few people in your life that you go, you know, that's somebody that, you know, you, you want to, you know, emulate um, in, in what you do. Baby ball is everywhere. All right. It's called baby ball. Baby ball is everywhere. Baby is to me. And I, and I, I, I can't, I no disrespect to anyone of the, the history, but today's football is emulated after after baby ball all over the city when we're throwing the ball around people you know laugh and saying you know it, it couldn't work um this the, the up tempo uh he i think everybody's doing what lansdown did and they realize even our rivals once Beatty left all of a sudden our rivals started doing things where lansdown were doing hey that looks like and then they were calling it something else um uh Beatty to me in terms of uh, influence is you know one of the, the top coaches in the history of the state. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, yeah, he, he's, he, he's the best. I, I, I don't know that, uh, I don't know who in the last 20 years has had more influence on an entire state and the way it's played, even if they don't know it, uh, th than Beatty. And uh, I, I, I love him. And to this day, I, I, I do anything for him. Well, to, you know, get more information, not just from you, but just the Total Pro fans and fans like yourself, how can people buy your book or contact you on social media? Um, yeah, you can um, find the book, uh, Mindful Quarterbacking, on um, Coach's Choice. That, that's the publisher, um, the Coach's Choice website. Uh, you can also find it on Amazon, though it just sold out, I learned, so it might take a, a little while to get, to get them uh, back in, so. That's a that that that's a good problem to have. Um, so yeah, you find Coach's cool. Choice and our Amazon. Um, you could you could do the Kindle version if you wanted, but I I, I wouldn't necessarily go that route just because um, the book also more interactive with you being able to write and, and things of that nature. But um, yeah, Amazon and uh, Coach's Choice are the best too. Um, social media and Twitter is the best platform. Um, and that's at win uh, the now F B W I N T H E F B uh, for football. Um, so win the now F B um, on on Twitter. And um, if anybody wants to talk ball, has questions about the book, or there's something I could have expanded on more. I know we don't have the most amount of time, but uh, anything I may have glossed over, or you know, you want to talk more about, please hit me up and look forward to learning from others as well. Um, and uh, if there's that, uh, if there's that, if there's that clinic, get out to the championship coaches clinic uh, at LC bird. May I'll, I'll find you there as well. Best, best clinic in the country. Well, coach Marcus Mayo, we really appreciate you again, total pole nation. Make sure you check out um, the book and get it from coach uh, coach's choice. And like you said, Amazon, that's, that's a good thing to have that just sold out. So I think a lot of people are probably getting it for, uh, you know, the holidays coming up. And then definitely follow on Twitter at win the now football or win the now FB um, coach Marcus Mel, Thank you so very much for being here with total pole. Uh, we really appreciate it. We'd love to have you back and ask you more questions and pick your brain. I think you got, you already educated us enough. Um, just not enough, but a lot here in this uh, meeting. And again, I'm sure the people at total pole are enthralled and, and very interested to hear more about uh, your philosophy and your coaching styles. I appreciate y'all having me and, uh, uh, you know, looking forward to, to um, uh, you know, hearing uh, any, any feedback. I'll take, I'll take any improvements too. So I'm, I'm a coachable coach. So yeah, man. Thank you. We, we appreciate your time and thank you. Total pole nation. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe. Watch the videos on the side. This is going to blow up. This is the best video in America, but also today's video is sponsored by dude wipes. Okay. It's the best wipes in America. And 35% larger, 99% water. Best product in America. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Thank you again. Appreciate you.